Ow. Son of a beast thing. People, it's Friday night, January 19th. It's the Friday after the week of the Davos WEF meeting in Davos, Switzerland. All right, uh, I'm going to give you the highlights because um, it's Friday night. What else am I going to do other than make a vlog? But I don't really want to have to do much editing, so I'm just going to put the highlights in a sequential order at the end of this rant because this is going to be a rant. I'm taking out my phone, people, because there's an expression and it iterates throughout generations, throughout cultures. What I knew growing up, my father used to say, from rice paddy to rice paddy in three generations. Now, I'm going to read from, it's called the Family Tree Video Dog. Who cares what it's from? It says, you may have heard the old proverb, quote, shirt sleeve to shirt sleeve in three generations. That actually might be the original one that I've heard. In Japan, the expression goes, quote, Rice patties to rice patties in three generations. You'll notice a bit, of a, a bit of a theme here. The three generations is one of them. The Scottish say the father buys, the son builds, the grandchild sells, and his son begs. And in China, they say wealth never survives three generations. Now, set aside the whole biblical potential reference to the Holy Trinity. There is something relevant to be uh, adduced from all of this. There's the old expression, everybody knows it. Hard times make hard men, hard men make easy times, easy times make easy men, easy men make hard times. It's an iteration of that very same expression. You get to a point where the people who worked for it pass it down to the people who didn't work for it, but who take it for granted, pass it down to the people who are spoiled, who don't understand what was involved in getting it, and squander it. Rice patty to rice patty in three generations. This week, we are witnessing the elites, the pompous, arrogant pricks uh, amassing in Davos. They fly out there, they take their private jets, they have their escorts because apparently all of the escort services in Davos are sold out for the week because none of these losers want to go without a hot wife. I'm, I'm like, I, I'm saying it almost jokingly, but it's not a joke. Superficial, satanic, uh, sinful people. That's what we're witnessing in Davos, by and large. Not all of them. I'm very certain because I attended a Twitter space yesterday. Some of them are of good faith looking for business opportunities, yada, yada, yada. Invite only is never something you want to be a part of. Who said George Carlin? I would never be a member of a club that would have me as a member. I screwed it up and it's not George Carlin. doesn't matter. You know what I'm getting at. You don't want to be a member of these clubs. You don't want to have the price of admission. I believe it was Arthur Brown. The price of admission is sin. The price of entry is sin. You know, anybody who knows Arthur Brown is going to know what I'm talking about here. An album that I grew up listening to on vinyl that my mother had. Doesn't matter. You go to this Davos with these, I don't want to use hyperbolic rhetoric, um, scum of the earth, satanic, uh, escort service, uh, milking out people who go there, they're looking for business, that's fine. Some of them are looking for businesses. It's hobnobbing with the big wigs and it's, it's good, fine. Others, and that's gonna be the higher ups, are about controlling what we as a people can do. Unelected, I don't even know what they are. They're not bureaucrats. Unelected globalist officials, uh, infiltrating governments, imposing policy, influencing policy to dictate what we, the lowly hoi polloi, can do. That's what Davos is. And if you hadn't seen this, 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 this bit, okay, there's a few clips I'm going to show as this vlog comes to an end. One of which is, I don't know who she is. She's a blonde woman telling us how they need to control information and disinformation to ensure th that's the number one concern for private enterprise for the upcoming years, controlling information and disinformation, meaning they know they're losing it and they're just trying to cling to it. And if they can try to implement policy at a national level, even though they are unelected uh, officials, they are unelected globalists, well, they're going to try. That's one clip. But the other clip I love the most is the son. I, I want to say the son, but some people are saying maybe the grandson. It's the son of George Soros. It's not the grandson. George Soros is a man who survived the Holocaust doing that which some might not have uh, done to survive the Holocaust, a Holocaust, to survive anything. Some people might have not stooped to the level of George Soros in order to survive. 
I might be one of those people. You know, everybody says, okay, are you gonna kill or be killed? At some point in time, if the world in which I have to live is one in which I have to demean and degrade myself to the level of the beast, I might choose to not live. I say that, I, I've never been forced uh, to test this theory, but I think I might, you know, just taking the obvious consequentialist um, theories, I might not do the utmost of evil on an individual level to reduce the evil on a broader scale. So I don't know. Would I kill or be killed? Unclear to be determined, depends on the circumstances. But you got George Soros, who survived the Holocaust by collaborating, and I'll put that in quotes, you know, to be forgiving, collaborating with the Nazis to collect the goods and the materials of Jews that they were sending off to camps, whatever. And George Soros says, look, if it wasn't me, it would have been somebody else. And when asked later on in his life, do you have any regrets? Do you have any uh, remorse? It's like, no, I was merely a spectator to my own life. And I can understand that, by the way. It's a very natural human defense mechanism. He was merely a spectator to what was going on. It's detachment. There's a... Um, there's actually a clinical term for it, where you believe that you are dead or observing the universe from outside your body. I have no doubt that he actually separated from his own being at the time in order to live with the regret, the guilt, the remorse, the horrors of what he did, participated in, or just passively observed. But that's George Soros. The same George Soros who's funding DAs in New York, who's funding politicians in Colorado who then appoint judges to the court. The same Soros who's funding DAs in, oh, the uh, McCloskeys, I forget what, what state that is. You know what, you know what I'm getting at. This is the same Soros who basically said, I wanna fund and craft and shape American politics. Fine, he survived, he thrived, he became a billionaire. He has kids and those kids now, in this last clip, clip are the ones who can't string a sentence together without, um, uh, without vocal fry that is literally rusty nails stabbed into your eardrums. His son, I don't know who it is, and you'll, you'll watch the clip. These are the people that are going to Davos right now, broadcasting to the world, because they're not doing this in secret. That's the other problem. They're not doing this in secret. They're doing this, and they're publishing the videos to their YouTube channel. They are publishing the clips to their YouTube shorts. And everyone else is taking those clips and saying, you guys realize you look like evil demons. You, you realize that, right? If you don't realize that, you must be evil demons with lack of insight, lack of self-introspection. They're posting these videos. They are evil demons announcing to the world the plans of their evil demonry. But coming right back to the beginning of this video, rice patty to rice patty in three generations. As the Scots said, uh, I forgot what the Scots said, but you heard it. You can go back and watch it. We're at that stage of history right now. This is Davos in its death throes. Why do I say it's in its death throes? Because you have people at Davos saying what we need to do over the next two years. Our concerns are not international conflict, not disease, not nothing. It's controlling information, disinformation. Why? Because they know they're losing it. Expose yourselves to the world, people. We are not stupid. We will see it. Everybody will see it and we will put it on blast. And the more we put it on blast, the more you know that your time has come to an end. It's rice patty to rice patty and WEF and your stupid escort service exploiting uh, reunion in Davos, it's coming to an end. You are a laughing stock. We know you are a laughing stock. True, an animal who is cornered is dangerous. A rabid animal is dangerous. They lash out. They are a rabid cornered animal and they are dangerous. But that doesn't mean that if I'm not watching the video, I'm not gonna make fun of them. They deserve to be made fun of, we will make fun of them. And that might make them angrier and angrier, but their time is coming to an end. The generation to generation to generation is coming to an end. For the WEF, for Davos, for Soros, for whomever. And it's gonna to come to a little bit of nationalization. I know it sounds terrible. Javier Malay came out there, he gave a speech. I'll throw that clip in here as well. That will make uh, the WEF uh, never invite him again at best or try something worse at worst. Javier Mele came in and basically, you guys are all relying on flawed systems, flawed, uh, you know, flawed whatever, and you refuse to accept it. I just lost my lighting here. There we go. Uh, rice patty to rice patty.
in three generations and Davos will go out in three generations and we're witnessing the death throes of a monster that knows its time has come but doesn't want to relinquish its power. It's going to happen regardless of what you want to do. And if you had any doubts, you'll watch these clips because they are demonstrative of the level of incompetence, idiocy, stupidity, arrogance, pomposity that we are seeing at the WEF this year. Not just that we're seeing, but that they are broadcasting to the world. Enjoy it! And uh, I hope I've done enough of the homework so that you don't actually have to go and watch the uh, source material because it's painful. Rusty nails to the ear. That's it. Go. Enjoy the weekend. Peace out, peeps. Uh, that's uh, Davos. It's awful. Period. Don't go. Don't go. The escorts are gone anyhow, so peace. Why? <laughs> Why should I? We have to give a future, we need to give hope, and we have to encourage the Ukrainian population ima to imagine their future. That this, it is our duty, and it is our, our interest to do this, because if they lose hope, they're no longer going to fight. If, they, if they're no longer going to fight, the geopolitical consequences will be major and they are not in our interest. So that's, there is a real spin behind this. For the global business community, the top concern for the next two years is not conflict or climate. It is disinformation and misinformation. Whenever you want to correct a supposed market failure inexorably as a result of not knowing what the market is or as a result of having fallen in love with a failed model, you are opening up the doors to socialism and condemning people to poverty. However, faced with the theoretical demonstration that state intervention is harmful and the empirical evidence that it has failed couldn't have been otherwise, the solution to be proposed by collectivists is not greater freedom, but rather greater regulation, which creates a downward spiral of, um, a spiral of regulations until we're all poorer and the life of all of us depends on a bureaucrat sitting in a luxury uh, office. Given the dismal failure of collectivist models and the undeniable advances in the free world, socialists were forced to change their agenda. They left behind the class struggle based on the economic system and replaced this with other supposed social conflicts which are just as harmful to life as a community and to economic growth. The first of these new battles was the ridiculous and un unnatural fight between man and woman. Libertarianism already provides for equality uh, of these sexes. The uh, co cornerstone of our creed says that all humans are created equal, that we all have the same unalienable rights uh, granted by the Creator, including uh, life, freedom, and ownership. All that this radical feminism agenda has led to is greater state intervention to hinder the economic process, giving a job to bureaucrats who have not contributed anything to society. Examples, um, ministries of, of women or international organizations devoted to promoting this agenda. Another conflict presented by socialists is that of humans against nature, claiming that we human beings damage the planet, which should be protected at all costs, even going as far as advocating for population control mechanisms or the bloody um, abortion agenda. Unfortunately, these harmful ideas have taken a strong hold in our society. Um, but, um, you know, I, um, I, don't think that that's the, I don't think that that's the fundamental, I don't think the technology is the fundamental issue uh, in, in democracy. Democracy is messy. I mean, you know, democracy is about contestation of ideas. It's about uh, plurality. Um, it's about people having different truths, actually. Now, mm. um, fundamentally, uh, how society lives together um, civically um, in, those, in those contestations um, is, you know, is obviously, uh, is obviously um, you know, quite, uh, quite, uh, you know, quite tricky. But I think that if we play too much on this disinformation card, we're taking the responsibility away from ourselves to actually create a narrative that 
inspires people to vote and to believe uh, you know, in, um, uh, in, uh, in democracy and democratic um, institutions. And on the institutional part, I think that we can talk about uh, institutions as these abstract things, but institutions are also about people. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, um, you know, we just heard this, this this point about untrustworthy people, and we talked about things in the United States like you know, like um, checks and balances, which aren't written anywhere, but are customs. And one man, Donald Trump, literally came in and just took that you know took that took that all away. Um, you know, so. Um, you know, so, um, you know, but when I see this, you know, when I look at this, um, you know, um, you know, uh, more globally regarding, regarding, you know, regarding democracy, I also say to myself, when was this great time that everybody got along so well and, you know, things were going so, so great? I mean, I think, you know, um, um, you know, the, um, you know, I think that we really have to be careful here in you know in this nostalgia uh, for a time uh, you know for a time past because a lot of the reactions we're seeing in society are actually reactions to positive uh, to positive things like you know like equality uh, for women um, you know uh, and um, uh, you know and greater diversity uh, which come with backlash.